to the Morgan factory. My name is Morgan. I have been upcycling clothes for seven to eight years. My business is called the Morgan factory. You can check it out. It's all 100% sustainable clothing made by local refugees here in Nashville, Tennessee. So you can get that link in the description. This channel is dedicated to sharing my knowledge with you guys. Um, I've been sewing my entire life. I have my bachelor's degree in fashion design and merchandising. And like I said, I've been upcycling for years. So here you're gonna find the tips and tricks to hopefully create some unique, cool items out of your own closet. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make uh, crochet tops. So these are made out of crochet blankets. You can find these in antique stores. You can find these at thrift stores. Um, I have quite the collection. I've been saving them up. But today we're gonna to be making a really cool funky top. And these are definitely a fan favorite in my shop. I almost sell out of these every single, Louie, come here. <laughs> I almost sell out of these every single time I launch them on my website. So I am super excited to show you guys how to make your very own. This one in particular is made with a, I think it was a denim vest or a denim jacket. But what's awesome about this design is that it is free size. It can fit you, your mother, your best friend, it can fit everyone and anyone. We are using crochet blankets today because they are a little bit more tedious. You can replace this like with your favorite fabric. Here is an example of sweater on sweater. So you've got the crocheted sides and I've upcycled a sweater for the middle. And this one's so cute, it has a hood and I just absolutely love the color scheme. Here is an example of the t-shirts. Oh my gosh, people die over these. They absolutely love them. Like how rock and roll and funky hippie are these? Like they are, they are so bomb. We are actually gonna be upcycling using a t-shirt today because they are also a little bit more tedious. Um, and I do wanna point out like it is important to pick a crochet blanket. Uh, for example, like this one, it has all these little holes in it. It has a lot of negative space. So those are sewn just a little bit different than a blanket quite like this one, um, where there are not a lot of holes. The crochet is knotted pretty close together. So yeah, keep that in mind when choosing your blanket. One question that I get asked all the time is, how do they not unravel? How do they not fall apart? And when you think about it, if you've ever crocheted or well, cr all crochet is, is loops and knots. And what is a sewing machine? Your sewing machine literally knots the threads. So as long as it is sewn and reinforced, which I'm gonna teach you how to make sure you can do that today, um, they will not unravel. You can wash these I do not recommend that you put them in the dryer because if your crochet blanket is made out of wool, wool shrinks in the dryer. <laughs> so um, you can hang them up to dry, but you they should be durable and they should last you a lifetime. The blanket I am choosing to use today is this really cool green, yellow and black chevron blanket and it is a good size. So I'm gonna stand up and show you. Now you can use all sizes However, um, you really want to be able to use one of the finished edges for the around the sleeve. So what I am going to do, and this one is a little, I mean, this one is a little large. And you, you need to keep in mind that the longer your blanket is, um, the heavier it will be which can put a strain on something like a t-shirt. Not so much a denim jacket, but a t-shirt, yes. But like I said, as long as it's reinforced and sewn properly, you should not have any issues. So I have got my blanket folded in half. Um, I'm gonna cut on my floor today so you guys can see. And those are the finished edges. So I've got my handy little tool right here. You can make it long sleeve. It's gonna be from 
here to your arm. So they can come anywhere from like your elbow to your wrist. You don't wanna make these super long because once again, they are a little heavy and you wanna be able to like wash dishes and type on your computer and things like that. So here you can see that I do just have these two panels and they are gonna be folded up like this. So I have this really, really cool journey vintage t-shirt. All I am doing is folding it in half, making sure, you know, t-shirts, sometimes they are printed uneven and that's especially with like cheaper t-shirts. So you really wanna make sure if it has side seams to not cut on the side seams, but cut where it lays flat. Um, if you've ever had like a, your side seams do this, you know what I mean. So you just wanna leave those be, lay it where it lays flat and then cut straight and just ignore the side seams. So now I have all my pieces cut out. If you'll notice when this is folded in half, the t-shirt is a little bit longer than the crochet. Yours may be the opposite. Your crochet may be longer than the t-shirt. Um, and that's okay. You really shouldn't, you, upcycling, you go with the flow. You, this is, this is fun sewing. So if you don't, if we don't pin things here, we don't cut perfect, like this is fun sewing and that is the way sewing should be. So do, do not fret if, um, it doesn't match up or it's not like mine, I will show you what to do if yours is longer. So now it is time to piece together our fun top. What I am going to do is, um, I like to sew with the crochet blanket facing up um, so I can see. Um, I like to just stick it in my serger right at the shoulder seam and then I am going to grab one of my pieces this is the raw side. I'm going to fold it in half and right here I am going to match it up with my shoulder seam. Stick it in the machine and I am just going to serge without stretching all the way down. And then I am going to take it where I started at the shoulder seam, lift up my presser foot, and surge all the way down. Now where you started, you are gonna have a tail. You do just want to snip that off and then do the other side. So now you have like this big square. The t-shirt is a little bit longer than the crochet. So I'm gonna take a very sharp pair of scissors and cut a straight line from where the crochet begins to the other side. And t-shirt will not ravel. So I'm just gonna slightly pull that and do the other side. Red is everywhere, it's okay. I am a seamstress. And here is your top. Now you can leave this as a poncho. What I like to do is I like to fold the sides in half again. And I'm gonna go just halfway. So like this little corner is absolutely perfect. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just back tack it like we did the edges. So here is a good example of one where the crochet comes down below the hem of the top. 
you want to fold this over just a quarter of an inch. You want to place your presser foot about half an inch up on the t-shirt. Back tack always. And then you can either, if you're with a home machine, I would just fold this over one time and stitch all the way down. Um, but on these industrial machines, they are a little bit more, okay, they're a lot more heavy duty. And this is where I like having fingernails <laughs> because this part can be dangerous. Um, you really want to, especially if you have a lot of loops in your blanket, you really have to have your fingers close uh, to guide the blanket under the presser foot because if it gets caught within the presser foot, all you have to do is, you know, stop and get it out. So there is a finished side. I'm gonna clip my threads. The hem of the blanket is raw, so I am just going to turn that under twice, and it can get thick right here. So if you are on a home machine, you might want to serge it and then just fold it up one time. If you can get it in there, if you're sewing and it is really, really thick, there is absolutely nothing wrong in hand turning it. I use my hand wheel all the time all the time so do not be afraid when it's thick you just need to go slow now just depending on depending on the style that you're working with some of these do take a little longer than others like that one that we previously did all i had to do was tack that bad boy this one i am having to sew all the way around the four edges don't get frustrated be patient i actually do not prefer to let my girls sew these i like to sew them myself because they are i mean this is probably for intermediate, advanced so seamstress, only because you've got to get your fingers super close to the presser foot, and you do have to have patience. Sewing is a lot of patience. It is. See, I've got a thread stuck in there right now. And I'm, I'm not back tacking right here. I'm just running it off because I have to sew this side anyway. And I like to work in a circle. So I started on one corner. I just picked a corner and then I am rotating the top counterclockwise or clockwise. I don't know. I'm just rotating it in a circle. And that is how I am not going to, I'm not going to miss anything. If you work like that, you're never going to have to stop, look at it, and figure out, like, what you need to sew next. Because once I get to where I started, I know that it is done. And that is a pro tip. If you chose a crochet blanket that has a lot of holes in it this is a great example so you can see it it has just been surged but it's kind of pulling it's it's kind of pulling apart and like you don't want to see that serger thread like it this looks like it's going to come apart so i am going to show you how on my sewing machine we can fix that once again you really do want black thread for this i'm going to show you with white thread so hopefully you can see exactly what I am doing okay for something like this you always want always want the crocheted on top 
So right here, you can see that the blanket does not meet up to the edge of where it is surged. So before I sew over that, I am, I'm pulling the blanket to where I can sew on it. Again, right here. So I am going to pull that over. And I'm just gonna continue to do that um, all the way down. Definitely a little bit more tedious. But it's going to look better. It's going to be better quality. You're not going to be able to see the surge from the outside or the white thread even. Because everything is going to have um, a piece of fabric there. You just don't want to bunch up um, the bottom. So now you can see that, I mean, you do not see thread or your serger thread anywhere. It is much, much better. So here is a close up of the side we just finished. And then here is a close up of the side that we still have to do. Here is the journey top. It is absolutely gorgeous. It turned out wonderful. Um, it will fit everyone and it is just so boho rock and roll. It is great. I like to front tuck mine. And this is one where we cut the t-shirt so it meets up with the sides. It's just tacked so you can wear like a little cami under it or not. You do not have to. And here is the other one that we finished today. This one is a little bit longer. I did not tack this one. So it is more of a poncho, but still it will fit everyone. I love the Johnny Cash. You can see the finished hem that we did at the sewing machine. It's fabulous. Ah, oh, and here is a Pink Floyd one. I love the little cutout that we did the, at the neck. You can do that to yours too. And this is the one where the blanket had a lot of holes. So as you can see, it is just perfectly sewn together. It is as cute as it can be. I am rocking it with my Morgan Factory bell bottoms. If you are interested in those, a video will be coming soon. But yes, I hope that this inspires you guys to make your own one-of-a-kind um, upcycle tops. And you can, do, you can do this with anything. So I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. Please tag me or send me um, pictures if you end up making one. I would absolutely love to see. If you guys have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. You can join one of our Facebook groups you can leave a comment below I will try to get back with you or you can email me which you can find all on my website everything that you need to create your own one-of-a-kind top besides the materials of course are linked in my Amazon storefront you can find down below including my favorite scissors my favorite sewing machines my what I use to cut my fabrics so please check that out and until next time, mwah!